Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Rail here, and today I'm going to be covering the 10th dev blog for the next game in the World War 1 game series, Isanzo. So the focus of today's dev blog is the assault class. This is another specialized class that will seemingly make a big difference on the battlefield with its equipment and special abilities. And with each new class, we learn more about the capabilities and potential for advanced levels of coordination. And I gotta say, all of this is already promising to me because with that higher level of teamwork potential and variability comes a higher skill ceiling. And usually that means more replayability and more people playing the game overall. So now let's dive into the information of this. To start, the two variations of the assault class that we'll be getting are the RDT for the Italians and the Austro-Hungarian Stormtroopers. Both of these units were designed to make quick and brutal advances into enemy lines, and of course with a specialized job comes specialized equipment. So one of the main benefits of the class is the ability to run light machine guns, for the Italians that's the Vilar Perosa, and for the Austro-Hungarians it's the Madsen. Both seem like they'll be invaluable assets to both the squad on the small scale and team on a larger scale. Here you can see the clip of the Violar Perosa in action, which I must say the animations look fantastic and seem to be a major improvement from the previous game. But I also can't go without pointing out the camera clipping issue at the end of this gif. Hopefully that doesn't make it to the final product, and even if it does it's hardly a big deal, but given it's still work in progress I would expect it to be fixed by release. Anyways, that's enough about light machine guns, let's switch to the other features available to the assault class. The canteen is something lots of people were asking about in the last video, and it appears the devs have listened and gave us a gif and description of how it will work. The canteen grants unlimited stamina and reduces suppression for a limited time. This is obviously incredibly useful for rapidly pushing trenches or getting out of the line of fire, but I'm still curious as to whether or not there will be a cooldown or limited uses, or maybe even a way to refill it on the battlefield. There's still a lot to figure out with this, but either way, I'm happy that we've seen a little bit of it in action at this point. Moving on from that, we have one of the perks available for the class, which has been described by the devs. The quickshot perk makes you twice as fast to aim down sights, which in close quarters action can give you the jump on less quick opponents. I think we'll really need to see how this whole game will end up being balanced in the future, but this to me sounds kind of crazy overpowered. I need to see how it plays once again before jumping to any conclusions or offering any suggestions for change. They also mention a perk that could be paired with light machine guns to deal increased suppression, but by taking either of these options for perks, you apparently would be giving up your choice of a melee weapon, those specifically mentioned here being the trench mace and the RDT dagger. Finally, we've got lots of details on the standard throwable grenades. The one on the left is a Italian frag, and the ones on the right are a Austro-Hungarian high explosive and frag grenade. The direct distinction being made between the two makes me wonder about the difference in particular use and effectiveness of each grenade and its blast radius, depending on whether it kills with concussive force or shrapnel. Here's a quick gif of the Austro-Hungarian high explosive one being thrown, and you can also apparently construct grenade boxes to allow your teammates to resupply and keep some of that important explosive momentum. And with that, it seems to be another example of how Isanzo's environment will be much more player controlled than previous games, with the construction and deconstruction of various utility nodes. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this week's dev blog breakdown. And while I've heard no news of a definitive release, they still say early 2022 on Steam. So I'm sure it's inching closer with each one of these. As always, this has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.